According to Einstein, space-time is like a fabric, and what we call gravity is the warping of this fabric by a massive object, like a star. A planet orbits a star when it's caught in this warped space, like a ball spinning around a roulette wheel. It's an astonishing idea, and it led Einstein to a prediction that when a massive object collides with another, or changes speed or direction, it produces waves in the fabric of space-time. Gravity waves. As scientists tried to simulate these waves, they found that up close, near violent events, they can be immensely powerful. Weber developed the first real experiment to detect gravity waves, a vibrating cylinder. A clever idea, and although Weber's detector wasn't sensitive enough to measure gravity waves, the excitement surrounding the experiment motivated many. Ray Weiss, a young professor at the time, thought he had a better way. The key to Ray's idea lies in the way a gravity wave distorts the fabric of space. This is what happens to space itself. It stretches in one direction and it compresses the other. It collapses up and down and it stretches sideways. And here's a gravity wave at a certain frequency. The frequency is once a second or something like that. That's what it does. To measure this stretching and squeezing, Ray turned to a device called an interferometer. A laser beam is split and sent down a pair of long perpendicular tubes, each precisely the same length. The two beams bounce off mirrors and recombine back at the base. The light waves come back, lined up in such a way that they cancel each other out. And you add them together, you get nothing. You get a zero, a big fat zero. No light gets detected at the photodetector. But when a gravity wave comes along, it distorts space and changes the distance between the mirrors. One arm becomes a little longer, the other a little shorter. An instant later, they switch. This back and forth stretching and squeezing happens over and over until the wave has passed. As the distances change, so does the alignment between the peaks and valleys of the two returning light waves. And the light waves no longer cancel each other out when added together in the recombined beam. Now some light does reach the detector with an intensity that varies as the distance between the mirrors varies. Measure that intensity and you're measuring gravity waves. The light takes longer time in here than it did in this arm now. It takes a shorter time and these things don't cancel so beautifully anymore. And that is in fact the whole idea. By 1990, labs had begun to spring up across the world with the goal of finding ways to measure tiny gravitational waves with an interferometer. It's called LIGO, short for Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. Each LIGO lab is a real-world version of the interferometer Weiss Envision, made up of two arms extending four kilometers in length. The size is key because the tiny stretching and squeezing effect increases in proportion to the length of the interferometer. The longer you make it, the more the mirrors move and the easier the signal is to detect. Also key is state-of-the-art optical and laser technology. Mirrors polished to a precision never before attempted. High-powered lasers among the most stable in the world LIGO is the work of hundreds of scientists, engineers, and students. The LIGO Scientific Collaboration, based at the labs and at dozens of universities around the world. Their goal? To measure the movement of mirrors down to a thousandth the diameter of a proton. The answer begins with one of the largest vacuums ever made. A laser beam can travel down LIGO's long arms without the distorting effects of air and remain stable as it bounces back and forth between mirrors. The mirrors themselves are cushioned with a suspension system that cuts outside noise by a factor of 10 billion. Springs and weights absorb movement from the ground. Vibrations are further reduced by fine wires that suspend the mirrors. 
If any remaining vibrations get through, a series of tiny magnets nudges the mirrors just enough to exactly counter them. The ultimate goal is to approach the very limits of measurement, down to a scale so small that quantum laws turn the straight lines of a ruler into a tangle of fuzzy impressions. Even with noise reduced to the lowest possible level, LIGO must still be able to tell when an incoming signal really is a gravity wave. That's one reason two identical labs were built, separated by 1,900 miles. If both labs pick up the same signal, chances are it's not noise from Earth, but a gravitational wave from space. And that combination of the observations that we make together with numerical simulations, I expect, will revolutionize our understanding of general relativity and its consequences. If the team can track down these titanic explosions, they can go after the biggest explosion of them all. LIGO holds this amazing potential to go back to the beginning to the first moments of space and time, the Big Bang. It takes you all the way back to the instant of creation. History has shown the great discoveries in science usually occur when revolutionary instruments provide new means to explore the universe. LIGO gives us a fresh set of eyes, an entirely new way to uncover the universe's deepest mysteries. Today, LIGO stands on the brink of discovery. A dream for decades, it's now a reality. A new branch of science, just being born. An observatory unlike any other, ready to hear the music of the cosmos echoing from the most distant reaches of space and time.